In the last video, we took a look at a graph and we identified all kinds of key features that were interesting about the graph and associated some vocabulary with it. We talked about the function being positive or negative or zero. We talked about the function being increasing or decreasing. And in the middle there, we had turning points and we had a lot of vocabulary associated with that, like minimum and maximum, local and global. And the last thing we looked at was spots where the function was concave up and concave down. So what I want to do in this video is I want to go back and look at those graphs we came up with and I want to compare the graph that we came up with with the graph of the derivative of the function. And the idea behind this is that I want to identify the key features that have something to do with the derivative. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. All right, so here's the graph. Remember, we dealt with this, and the blue sections in the graph were where the function was decreasing, the pink section was where the function was increasing, and the circle parts were where the graph was experiencing a turning point. All right, so let's, let me describe what's happening here using numbers, and while I'm doing that, I want you to to pay close attention to both what's happening in this graph of f of x and this graph of what's happening to f prime of x, the derivative of f. And I want you to see if the spots, the intervals that I'm talking about here have something interesting happening to them in the derivative function. Okay, so let's review here. So this function is decreasing from negative infinity, x equals negative infinity, to x equals, I don't know, negative two and a half or so. Then it's got a global minimum, and then the function is increasing on this interval from negative two and a half or so to negative 0 0.5 or so. And then it has a maximum, and then it's decreasing from negative 0 0.5 to a little bit less than x equals one. And there it has a local minimum, and from there it increases all the way up from a little less than one to infinity. So can you see when I was describing those intervals on this graph, what was happening to the graph of y equals f prime of x? Well, this first section where the graph was decreasing, we're looking at this section of the graph right here, up through negative two and a half, which is just about here. And here was the spot on the graph of f of x where we hit a global minimum. And then the graph was increasing. And the graph was increasing all the way up to about this point. And here's where it hit a local maximum. And then the function started decreasing over kind of a short interval until we got to about this point. And here's where it hit a local minimum. And then it started increasing all the way up to infinity. So what was happening in the graph of the derivative at the same time that that was happening? So let's fill in this table over here, talking about each one of these pink and blue sections of this graph, what the corresponding feature in the graph of the derivative was. So everywhere that the graph of f of x was increasing, the graph of f prime of x was positive. So if a graph is increasing, then we have that f prime of x is greater than zero. If the graph was decreasing, then f prime of x was less than zero. And the turning points that we identified were the points where f prime of x was equal to zero. So this gives us a really nice way, even if we don't have a graph of a function, of determining where the graph is increasing or decreasing. Rather than trying to graph the function, we can take the derivative of the function and then solve to see when it's positive, negative, or zero. And that will tell us where it's increasing, decreasing, or potentially hitting a turning point. All right, let's do the same thing, taking a look at the concave up and concave down sections. So once again, I'm going to describe the function happening over here, and I want you to take a look at the graph over here. So we decided that the graph was concave down all the way from negative infinity 
up to about this point, about negative one and a half or so. And then negative 1.5, it started being concave down. And it was concave down until it hit a little bit more than zero. Not quite zero, but just a tiny bit more. And then it was concave up from that section all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so what was happening in this graph over those intervals? So once again, now I'll trace this graph while we tell that story again. So the graph of f of x was concave down until we hit about negative 1.5 or so. And then we hit an inflection point. And then the graph was concave down. It went concave down until it was a little bit more than one. And then it became concave up again all the way to infinity. So what was the corresponding features of the derivative graph compared to the original graph? Well, what I think you saw is that wherever the graph was concave up, we had that the function f prime of x was increasing. And where it was concave down, we had that f prime of x was decreasing. Not necessarily positive or negative, but it was increasing or decreasing. And the inflection points were the points where f prime of x had a turning point. OK, so we'll make a cleaner table of this uh, in the next video or two. But the key idea here is that we can identify trends that are happening in the graph of a function without seeing the graph of a function, just by knowing the equation of a function and the equation of its derivative. So that's going to be something that we take advantage of over the course of this module and the next module.